Of course, a nose with Lewin wasn't just the music, there were the stories. And these would have been told by the droll teller, who would go from house to house telling his stories and legends for his supper. We have our own special droll teller this evening, Benjamin Luxon, hot foot from the National Opera. The only difference, our droll teller has been paid his supper in advance, so it better be good. <laughs> ben, what story have you got for us? Oh, I've got a great story for you. I think you'll like it very much. Have you ever heard how Dick Stevens fought the bear? No. Well, in this time, people knew the story from Penzance to Plymouth, and my father knew it, and he told me to get Dick to tell me the story one day. So, one evening I met him on Trenarn on the way home from market, and he up and told me, as we say. Well, must have been 51 or 52 years ago. I remember, I was 20, 22 years old then, and I remember as if it was yesterday. There was a fair down to Fair Park and crowds of people, and there was a wrestling saloon with a notice up, who would wrestle the bear? They had a get leather and apron, a blacksmith apron, for they put on to protect me from the bear's claws, see? Well, I went down with your Uncle Bill, a regular sporting man he was, anything for a bit of sport. And when the man said, he said to me, Dammy Dick, go in and fight the beggar boy. That was how we used to talk, see? And when the man got up and said, who'll fight the bear, your uncle said, here, mister, I got a man who'll wrestle your bear for you. So after that, I had to, like. So I said to him, darny, then I will. Now, you know what a boxing saloon is like? Well, it's like a, ah, but I forget. Before I fought him, there was a fellow called Bob Sanders. He'd live in town now. He was a, he was a uh, mason's apprentice or a mason. Fine get fellow, gate arms on him. Well, he was going to fight the bear first, see? Well, in we went. And all the people came crowding in. The place was crammed. I never seen nothing like it. They had a few rounds of boxing and wrestling, you know, like they normally do. And then Bob Sanders' turn come. Now, he was the sort of chap that they drink a lot. And he went round to pubs, and anyone that was drunk, he'd up and give them a blow and knock them out. <laughs> Mind you, a fine built fellow. He had great arms on him. Well, he took his place in one corner and the bear in the other. Great brown berry was 400 pound weight. When they said time, he rose up on his iron legs and he come forward. <laughs> My God, Bob Sanders didn't stop the meeting halfway. He no sooner had gotten seen and get on his iron legs and he gave one lep and lep right out of the rocks and amongst the people. You should have seen the people laugh. <laughs> Bob Sanders never heard the end of it for months and months. And he used to ask him, eh, Bob, how did he fight the bear in? Different from knocking out drunk men in pubs, wasn't it? <laughs> well, that put the wind up me a bit, I can tell you. But I didn't say nothing. They had a few more rounds of boxing, and then my turn come. They put the leather apron on me, and then before we begin, the man said, there's two things I want for you to understand, young man. This here bear is muzzled. If you'd have touch a muzzle, he'll bite your head off. The second thing is, you take on at your own risk. We won't be responsible for nothing that to happen. Well, they said that for the putty off a bit, and I tell you, I was a very bit frightened. But I didn't say nothing. They had a few more round of boxing, and then we began. They called time, and the bear rose up on his hind legs, and he come forward. Mind you, I thought hundreds of things. He come for to meet me, and he put out his gate arms, and we met, and he hugged me, and I hugged him. <laughs> I couldn't ship him. I tried to lift him off his feet, but he was, it was impossible to. He was that heavy. I tried to give him a can and tilt him over. I kicked at his leg, but he wouldn't let go. What was I to do with him? Well, I thought and I thought. I had all of him in mind. I didn't let go. But he was clever, trained to it. And I noticed that he was nuzzling up in under my chin and trying to push me back up, trying to push me back. And I thought, ah, that's his game to get me back up. After that, I kept him well down right. Now, I also noticed he was doing all the work with his forearms, and I thought, now, if I can get they and pinch them, he wouldn't be able to do so much. So I got all of his arms, I pinched them, and I pinched them. I didn't let go. I was sweating like a bull, but I could feel he panting and struggling, and I thought, no, mister, I got he. I could feel his breath coming and going, and when the people saw I had him, they were shouted, Give him to him, Dick! You'll do an old man! You'll do an old arm, boy! You'll be all right! And then I even up sideways, give him a twist, and throw him right over on his back. Ha <laughs> ha! You should have heard the cheering. My God, they said you could hear it all the way uptown. Well, the fellow that run the show, he was a decent sort of chap. He said to me, well, that's the first I've been served, that trick, young man. Hundreds of people have tried to throw him, but nobody yet have been able to do it. And then he said, would he tackle again? Well, oh, 
Now my blood was up, and I felt confident, like, so I said, S, I'll tackle him again, and I'll throw him again. Well, there this bear was, back in his corner, panting, and I was sweating like one thing. Well, when they said time, he'd come for me. He was angry, see, never been thrown like that before. He come at me and got his fork around the back of the head, and he gave me a blow around the back of the head. I tell you, draw blood made me smart, I can tell you. But this time, I knew what to do. I knew how to throw him, and it didn't take me long. I got his arms pinched, I give him the cant, and I twist him right over, almost out into where the crowd was. Ha <laughs> ha, my dear life, there was some kick up. Oh, you should have heard the cheering. Well, anyway, I forgot to tell you. While we were swaying to and fro, the bear got his nose out to the muzzle and he snicked my sleeve off at the hem. And in the interval, I he fell down and I put it in my pocket. Well, when I got home that night, uh, my mother was in the kitchen, like a mind as if it was yesterday, I think. Good mother she was to me and a mother to everybody. And I said, uh, your mother, use me sleeve for you to mend. And she said, all right, boy, uh, how did you come to tearing like that? So I said, Oh, I've been in town fighting the bear. With that, father came in and he told the story. And you know, all she said was, you ought to have a box on the side of your ear. <laughs> and that was all that was said about it. <laughs> eh? Must have been 51 or 52 years ago.